So what SBF said sound like he doesn't feel depressed, but again, he has these coping mechanisms for it. As an example, the only way to shut out that depressive feeling is for him to ignore reality, ignore the fact that he's committed fraud, ignore the fact that he's committed a huge crime, ignore the fact that he might be going to prison for the rest of his life. All that might be just a coping mechanism. And yes, we can all psychoanalyze and say all that, but this is just my two cents. At the end of the day, yes, he's committed a great, great crime. Yes, he's committed massive fraud. Yes, he's lost people's life savings. At the end of the day, he's still a human being and we ought to treat him like one. So I do feel sympathy for him. And you might be wondering, why do I feel sympathy for him? It's because- Hey everyone, welcome back to Tech with Lawrence. This will be my last video of Sam Bankman Freed. In the last two videos, I gave my two cents of SBF and his interviews. The first one was on New York Times and then the second one was on Twitter. Since then, he's been charged with eight counts of fraud. So pretty much all the governing agencies from the US went after him. You have US Securities and Exchange Commission, the US Commodity Futures Trading Commission coming after him. And finally, you have the Department of Justice coming after him as well. He's been charged with eight counts of fraud. If proven to be true, each count can be worth up to 20 years in prison or more. And it's been proven a lot of the things he said publicly in the last few interviews had a lot of lies. There's no doubt about it now, they were lies. Needless to say, he might be going to prison for the rest of his life. And for these three departments to each file their own charges against him, the evidence is overwhelmingly against him. So why are we here? Well, in this video, Tiffany Fong released an audio of a candid conversation she had with Sam Bankman Freed about going to jail, being depressed, drugs or amphetamines. And because I gave my two cents on him appearing professionally and even on Twitter, with this last video about SBF, let's see the human side of him. And again, with all these videos, these are just my opinions. I'll have the link to the original video in the descriptions below. Are you worried about jail? I try not to think about it. I, I try just to focus on like what I can do now. And like, it's just not like, there's not, there's not any point in remaining on the future right now, but it's, I'm not, uh, I don't know. I don't, I'll have to contend more seriously with it emotionally sometimes and oh. not to just the future. I'm sorry. Oh, that's not gonna be fun. Oh god. So we can see from Sam Bankman Freed's response, he hasn't come to terms with going to jail, going to prison for a very long time. I guess the way he's dealing with it is by not thinking about it, which in my opinion isn't healthy. If you can imagine, he might be locked away for a very long time. Different people have different ways of coping, and this is his personal way of coping with that. There's no right or wrong here, it's just his mechanism of coping with what he's done and he's choosing not to face reality to be honest we could sort of see that in his previous interviews as well not facing what's real in front of him you can hear in his voice he's actually very sad and yeah just based on his response i i do feel for him even though he has committed crimes which he's still innocent until proven guilty by the way at the time of this video uh, it is what it is you know, it sucks, but like, it's also, I don't know, I don't, I don't, when I zoom out, have as much sympathy for myself as when I zoom in. It has been quite a, you're, you're definitely going to be in history books. Oh yeah. <laughs> Uh, light part I'm of sorry. I made a name for myself. You've certainly made a name for yourself. Yeah, I'll take it. He's made a name for himself, but in a notorious way, in a very negative way to society. And I see this as more of a coping mechanism, just making a joke or taking a joke. Because in his position, there's nothing to be happy about, nothing to look forward to. It is a very negative and difficult situation for him to be in. This coping mechanism is acceptable. And again, it's a candid conversation, one which I'm not sure if SBF actually expected it to be released publicly. Yeah, that seems like that. <laughs> Also, what time do you go to bed? Compliment. <laughs> oh, the highest compliment. The compliment. Yeah, do you like not sleep? Or what, when do you go to bed? I don't sleep a ton. I'm kind of insomniac. And I also just like, I don't, I don't have like a super well-defined like sleep schedule. And it, it doesn't, there's no like, there's no reason that I particularly need to keep one schedule over another. And so 
Uh, it's all, all over the place. So he sleeps schedules all over the place. Uh, we don't know if that's true when he was running the company or if that just happened now. I will comment having a consistent sleep schedule is super, super, super important for both your mental health and your physical health as well. So don't do what he's doing. <laughs> is this the amphetamines rumor? Oh boy, God, that, that's one of the weirder conspiracy theories that's taken hold. I mean, whatever, it's not like there's zero truth to it, but it, it's, it's definitely like lost the plot a little bit. And half the claims are not even, I think, in the right direction from what you would expect. And, uh, and also the, like, some of the research has been like shockingly lame, like, or shockingly so sort of pathetic what do you in mean? terms of, just like don't even bother Googling things sometimes. And like, or like one person Googles it and like misreads a little bit what Google says and no one else bothers like double checking it. I have okay, I don't understand, I guess, his perspective on amphetamines or what the public has said. I gave my opinion on the New York Times interview when it was brought up and I can repeat it here again. I know quite a few people who do take it during work. Uh, some of these um, are like executive levels, you know, people my age or even older as well. It's like an unspoken theory, unspoken culture as well. One in which I don't think the public has accepted in today's time. You know, the general public is still very against using any kind of drugs to modify your thinking or behavior in any way. Only recently have we been legalizing cannabis and there's businesses coming out of that. So this is still a very gray area of discussion. Uh, one in which, yeah, he actually might have a point. Maybe the public did blow it out of proportion or didn't do their research about it. I'm just stating from my experience and the people I know. And again, sometimes they microdose to focus on doing work. And hey, I don't do it, but maybe some people need that. I haven't actually looked deeply into that. I just see that being a prevailing theme of social media. Oh yeah, it certainly has been. And you know what, all things considered, like, I don't know, is that any worse than the media narrative about re me right now? I'm not sure it is. Are you, like, are you depressed? Depressed. Like, I... uh, this conversation happened before he got charged, indicted. I can only imagine he will be depressed if he's already not facing reality, ignoring reality about him about to be arrested or committed a crime, even though he doesn't think so. You can imagine that's a coping mechanism for depression. I only feel for him as a human being. You know, I do feel bad for him for going through all this, but I will repeat that that doesn't undermine what he did and the charges he's being accused of. Hence why he got three separate US government entities coming after him. It's insane. If he's not depressed, it's like, He's not even human. It's, no, I understand it. It's, um, how do I say it? Like, almost like, uh, you can't even I mean, well, talk it's a about definitional it. issue. Um, and I mean, I don't know, probably yes by most definitions. Um, yes by but, most definition. Hmm. Uh, Are you someone who just doesn't get traditionally depressed? Well, I, it's complicated. It depends on which symptoms you're talking about i have some symptoms and not others okay um and uh or like i generally have i i generally have some symptoms quite strongly and others i almost never have and so it is uh like generally what? definitional i guess to me if i have a period of just feeling just generally depressed i don't really break yep. it down by symptoms yeah so like i basically think like there's um positive and negative Symptoms, not as in good and bad, but as in like the presence of something or the absence of something. Mm -hmm. And like, I tend to feel the absence of something symptoms much more acutely than the presence of something symptoms. And so like, you can think of it as like muted highs much more so than like low lows. Like you don't feel like actively um, like low, you just feel the absence of happiness. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Um, and well, that's still... I mean, Depression. all things considered, combines not terribly with things being real fucking bad because, you know, it, it's, I don't have a particularly cute feeling of shittiness. Like, I'm relatively good at, like, compartmentalizing and functioning. When okay, so this is an alarming answer. It just goes to show that he's not facing reality. He's not even concerned about 
at this point in time, going to prison for a very long time. The fact that he says he can compartmentalize these things into separate chunks, his emotions and his feelings. It's concerning because it doesn't seem like he feels bad. And he's literally saying he can separate that. He can separate his emotions from each other. Meaning, if he's done something bad, he can separate that aspect from feeling bad and from feeling depressed, which is alarming. It's a huge red flag. Usually you would only compartmentalize if you need to. For example, professional work versus personal life. That sometimes is a healthy barrier to have to compartmentalize the two. Again, he's accused of doing a fraud. When you've done a fraud, hurt a lot of people and you don't feel depressed, sad about going to jail for it. That's a huge, huge red flag. You know, I'm not a psychologist, I have to repeat that, but as a human being, it's a bit What's the right word? Pathological? It's a bit psychotic. All I can say is that way of thinking, in my opinion, is quite unhealthy. The fact that he's not even feeling sad about what is to come because he's not facing reality. And things are shitty at this point. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, and then, like having a low baseline doesn't, doesn't really help when things are shitty either. Yeah. I did just want to say to keep in mind that I'm assuming that this is Sam's experience of depression when he is using MSIM because again, keep in mind that this phone call took place far before he was actually arrested and put in jail. I have no idea what MSIM is. I'm very inexperienced with any type of drugs. If you know what it is and what it does, leave it in the comments below. The most I know is like microdosing with psychedelics. Amphetamines I have, I actually don't even know the difference between the two. Let me know. <laughs> Is it the same thing? So what SBF said did sound like he doesn't feel depressed, but again, he has these coping mechanisms for it. As an example, the only way to shut out that depressive feeling is for him to ignore reality, ignore the fact that he's committed fraud, ignore the fact that he's committed a huge crime, ignore the fact that he might be going to prison for the rest of his life. All that might be just a coping mechanism. And yes, we can all psychoanalyze and say all that, but this is just my two cents. At the end of the day, yes, he's committed a great, great crime. Yes, he's committed massive fraud. Yes, he's lost people's life savings. At the end of the day, he's still a human being and we ought to treat him like one. So I do feel sympathy for him, a lot of sympathy. And you might be wondering, why do I feel sympathy for him? It's because he's only 30 years old, similar age to me. At 30, you are literally just starting your life. Some might even say you're halfway through your life. And for him to be locked up for the rest of his life, is extremely sad. I'm not saying he doesn't deserve it. I'm literally expressing that thought and that notion is extremely disheartening. It's very sad. And yeah, there's always two sides to look at it. Recently, I've been reading crypto billionaires have been literally uh, dying left, right, and center. There's some conspiracy theory going on that they're being taken out. Sam Backman fried might actually be safer in prison than he is walking free in the Bahamas or wherever he planned to go. And if you don't believe me, let's literally just go to Google and you can see here, I found it strange. These cryptocurrency leaders are all being found dead back to back and they're within a few weeks of each other as well. How can three to four crypto leaders or founders suddenly die within months of each other? We don't need NCIS to see what's going on here. Yeah, that that's that's really, really scary. So it's very scary. Like, I don't know what these billionaires have done. Maybe they lost people's money. But yeah, I don't want to comment on that or get into these conspiracy theories. SBF might actually be safer in prison. So we're done with Sam Bankman fried until his hearing. I do want to make a comment about crypto itself. This channel of mine is about technology. Crypto itself is a technology that actually works. All the records are there in the blockchain chain. It's immutable, meaning you can't change it as well. So everything can be traced back. Even though it might take longer, it's all there in the public, verified by millions of computers and a lot of processing power and wasted electricity. But the blockchain technology itself is actually beneficial to us, to society. But we do have bad actors. The bad actors is what we need to get rid of. The scams, the pump and dumps. It's super obvious it needs to be regulated, just like the stock market, so that everyday people can actually embrace the technology. And yeah, I think it's important to follow through with a bad actor and actually see the consequence of what happened. Hope you enjoyed this video. Like, comment, and subscribe for more tech related content. I'll try and release a product review once a month next year. I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. Like, comment, and subscribe. And to see more user reviews, click that way. Let me know in the comments below what you guys want me to review next.